Mr. Jacob Arabo, my warm regard. It's really a pleasure talking about your story here at Puzzle World. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. Um, actually, last year you celebrated your 30th anniversary. Um, a luxury timepiece and diamond jewelry house was founded by the young boy who came from Uzbekistan to the US. What was your greatest belief at that time and how did you actually start? Well, I was a teenager when I came to America and I had a dream. I, I, when I was 15 years old, I decided that I will become a designer because earlier um, my father got me a job during summer to be a photographer, to learn all the photography, to become a photographer. So I became a photographer and photography gave me a chance and gave me inspiration to design jewelry and watches. So I knew by 15, 15 and a half that I'm going to be jewelry designer and I went and did it. I went to, to I took courses and um, I just went for it. I always designed something that other people wouldn't do. I always went against the wind, but in the end I was very successful. What was your uh, very first piece that you created? The very, very first piece, I had a job with a factory for, for a short time, for a few months, and there were some scraps left from gold uh, tubings and earrings that we used to, that we worked for, uh, in the shop I stayed after work and I decided to design something out of the scraps and next morning I showed my um, employer the new piece of jewelry that I designed it was a bangle bracelet that he took massive orders for this is my this was my very very first piece of jewelry I designed and then after that it was just on and on and on. And what was the first piece that was actually launched under the Jacob and Co. Uh, name brand? The very first piece, uh, my, my nickname, my company name was Jacob the Jeweler. And when I decided to make a watch in 2001, this was the first time ever that we print Jacob and Co. actually in a piece of jewelry or watch. So, my very, very first watch was first Jacob & Co. Um, you are uh, making the jewelry and the watches from very precious games and stones. Um, where are they comes from and what are the criteria and preferences when you are choosing these materials? Well, I don't bargain with quality, so I buy only fine quality. I've searched, researched all over the world. And where they come from? From Mother Nature. Uh, of course, uh, whatever I can get uh, from Australia, Brazil, uh, we get from Africa, from everywhere possibly to get uh, from color stones from uh, Bangkok. It's really all over. It's, it's what's available, at what price, and what's the best to be offered for me. So it's not that one particular place, it's just all over the world. Uh, as you already mentioned, in early 90s, uh, early 90s you were known as Jacob the Jeweler. And nowadays you have quite a lot of ambassadors, let's say, it's also among celebrities from Hollywood, musicians, uh, fashion and also sport. And what kind of special orders have you made for them, maybe, if you, um, in a way of producing unique pieces? Well, I made uh, many special orders already for many of celebrities, maybe you know. Um, what would I do if I have to do it again? So what new I would design? Is that what the question is? Uh, well, every person has a personality. So I, I design jewelry according to your personality. And for example, I design a diamond hang, hand gloves for Madonna. And that's her personality. This is what she likes. This is what she does with material. I made that in gold materialized with diamonds. She loved it. What I would do now for someone new, um, you know, I didn't think about that. But when, when someone requests something new from me, I would design. 
Uh, right now, I'm so into watches. You know, in this Basel Fair, my my focus is in specialty watches, also jewelry, of course. So, I would I would design Jay Z a new watch. Last watch I designed for him called Black Caviar, and he loved it. It's all over magazines. He's wearing the watch. So who knows? I would design something different. He loves watches. When did Jacob and Co. launched his first watch and why actually you decide for uh, producing also watches? When was the first time? 2001. I started to design 2001, I developed it, I launched it early 2002. That was the very, very first time. It's exactly 12 years ago now. And why did you decide for producing watches also? Well, because I had great clientele. Um, I had all the celebrity clients and they always wanted something new and different. And at the time I was reselling uh, basically all the other brands. I was representing many, many brands. Um, and I always saw the mistakes maybe and, and I always saw that niche business that not there, and I knew what my clients want, that they did not manufacture, they did not design um, in their basic line. So I just took different path, and I, I designed something that no one else has been making, and that was super successful. And uh, nowadays Jacobs and Co. has around 150 uh, retail and distribution partners worldwide. I wanted to ask you about the market segmentation. So is there different preferences uh, regarding the part uh, of the world in the consumer preferences? I, I, I don't... My preference is whom I impress with my uh, designs. It, I don't especially pick a, a certain place or country or a continent where I want to be more known and less than the other. I'm just an uh, international brand and whoever will appreciate my piece of jewelry or a watch, that will be my customer. It doesn't have to, doesn't matter where he's coming from, whether it's coming from Russia, China, South America, North America or or Italy, it doesn't matter. It just that client is the client who saw this beauty and recognized and appreciate is my client. What is maybe your motto or the message of the Jacob and Co? Motto or message of Jacob and Co. I want to thank every client that I have and every supporter and um, I will never disappoint uh, them and I will continue designing and bringing beautiful new things to life. And that's my message to my... Thank you so much. And finally, because we are, um, have this nice conversation here at Basel World, can you share with us maybe some feelings about the event? Um, to share my feelings about the event? The event is going fabulous. I'm very pleased. There were many, many journalists, there are many, many collectors and distributors who are knocking on our door and uh, we were very, very uh, successful at the show. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. My team of 30 people here prepared for the last six months for this event, for this eight days event. And it's paying off very well because we're delivering what we wanted to deliver. And, and the people who come in here, my pleasure is when they are super happy to see it. Mr. Jacob Arabo, thank you so much for your time and for the special interview and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much.